Welcome to a short lecture on the introduction to the statement of cash flows, and this is related to Chapter 6 in the Free Financial Accounting Textbook. So let's first go to the authoritative source for the statement of cash flows, and we're going to FASB's Statement of Financial Accounting Concepts Number 1, discussing how financial reporting, it's, it's really important to portray to the reader of the financial statement the position on liquidity, solvency, and the flow of funds. What's a company using its, uh, its cash for? How is it uh, generating cash? How is it using cash? This is extremely important. This is the authoritative source. I'm going to have this link in the, uh, in the accounting textbook in Chapter 6. So first thing to think of in the statement of cash flows is that it, cash is not just another asset. We're going to create a financial statement just for cash. And while you may have had uh, different definitions for different words when you started financial accounting, the word for cash is cash. We all know what money is. It's a great measuring stick. So remember in Chapter 1, we were talking about how the purpose of a corporation or an organization is to increase the wealth of its stockholders. Uh, that's a really difficult thing to capture in a lot of ways. But what's really simple to capture is this measuring tool of cash. How much does a company have? Is it increasing? Is it decreasing? What's it using it on? So an uh, important thing to think of is that, uh, and to prove that, that cash is not just another asset, is that even if a company is solvent and profitable, it can still go bankrupt, as long as it has cash or access to it. And that's a big or, because once a company loses access to cash, the market doesn't trust its IOUs anymore, uh, it's, it's in a very bad situation. Now, uh, this cash flow statement is basically an account reconciliation of the cash account. And I taught you, I gave you a, an account analysis tool in Chapter 5. Uh, what you're doing is you're starting with beginning cash. You're breaking all the transactions, all the accounting transactions in, of the year into the operating, investing, and financing sections. You memorized those three categories in, in Chapter 1. And if you think about this for a moment, since the income statement flows into the statement of retained earnings, which flows into the balance sheet, the balance sheet really contains all of the accounting transactions of the period. So that's mechanically where we're going to uh, concentrate. So uh, some things to remember here. I'm going to give you a little bit of memorization on top of what you've had. And also, I don't want you to forget your basic accounting. In order to break down these transactions into the appropriate categories, you need to remember how we recorded them. So go back and understand and think about the, the original transaction, how it was recorded, and that's going to help you categorize these into uh, the proper category for the statement of cash flows. In uh, this textbook, we're not going to do a bank reconciliation or study internal controls. We did that in, in the, uh, the free business math and financial literacy textbook that's also posted. Uh, I'll give you a link to that so you can uh, review that material if you need to. So we're going to start with looking at an intercompany analysis of just the cash account. I've got five different companies here from five industries, all household names. And you can see uh, the importance of cash overall to the, the, uh, the balance sheet. And uh, again, we're expressing cash as a percentage of total assets. This is uh, vertical analysis. We're doing this for 2010 and 2009. These are all December 31st year ends, by the way, except for... Uh, I think Intel is like a December 25th, and, and Walmart as a retailer is sometime at the end of January of, of the following year. But you see where Google, a high-tech company, I put uh, communications, uh, has 20, roughly a quarter of its assets in cash, whereas old uh, technology company, Arch Coal, only has 2% of its total assets. Think about the differences of these businesses. Uh, Arch Coal has large investments in its uh, coal reserves. It costs a lot of money for the, the mining equipment and, and to, to develop a new mine. So that, that kind of makes sense. Uh, look at Goldman Sachs Financial Services. Only 4% of their total assets are in, uh, in cash. So let's take a look at uh, comparing cash flows between different companies. And this is actually just a statement of cash flow. So let's look first at this line item of Google Inc. And uh, uh, this uh, chart is available in the, uh, in the financial accounting textbook in Chapter 6. I also will post a link to Google Docs so you can see the math here. Uh, all the numbers are in millions of dollars. I got them either from Yahoo Finance or Edgar, the actual 10K statements. Uh, so this is Google Inc. 
And we have the cash at the beginning of the year, January 1, and the cash at the end of the year, 12-31-2010. This first column, cash provided from operations, cash used in, finan in investing, and cash provided from financing. Uh, this last column, exchange rate changes, is something that you'll cover in advanced accounting. So let's kind of ignore it for now. It's, it's not all that, that uh, material. Uh, but you see, if I the net change in cash for the year, all I've done is I've broken it into these three different categories. So cash at the beginning of the year, plus cash you provided from operations. Think of what Google's operations are. It is uh, selling advertisements, among other things. That's their biggest. Uh, investing. What would Google be investing in? Uh, this is, uh, for example, maybe they're building a data center. Would investing include hiring people? And if you've studied this, you know that people are not assets. We can't own them. Therefore, uh, this has got to be investment either in buying new businesses, new technologies, or uh, purchasing data centers. This so last column, cash provided from financing. So either this year, uh, Google either borrowed money or perhaps uh, it sold some stock. I think actually if you look at their financial statements, they borrowed money. So the net change of these three accounts plus the exchange rate changes give us our end of the year balance in cash. Let's compare that to some companies in other industries. Uh, every company that we have here is investing uh, for the future. This is investments that are going to create future income from operations, if you think of it that way. So as a percentage, wow, look at Google, large investment. Uh, Intel has a large investment. Walmart, huge large investment. Let, you know, think of what they're investing in, building new stores, uh, new service centers. But look at uh, Goldman Sachs in financial services industry, a very, very tiny amount in, in investment in, uh, in future uh, uh, investing money that they hope is going to generate uh, either future returns or future operating income. Uh, now let's look at cash provided from financing. Uh, Google had to borrow money or sold stock. Uh, Goldman Sachs borrowed a large seven billion dollars worth of money. Uh, Walmart on the other hand paid uh, quite a bit of, of money back. So they either paid dividends or perhaps they looked at uh, 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 they paid in. Uh, they paid off loans, but they used a lot of money in in uh, in paying back. So they didn't have to borrow money. They were net uh, uh, in the market. They were putting money back into the market, paying people back. So this is a good uh, chart that allow you to compare uh, companies. First of all, understand how this cash flow works, the statement of cash flow works, and then see how we can compare this doesn't matter what industry you're in, this common measuring tool of cash allows us to uh, do some analysis between companies uh, in, in very uh, widely varying industries. So uh, please go back and study hard. Hope to see you in class and uh, uh, good luck on the, on the web.